My next guest is an expert in tracing and preventing cyber attacks. He says ransomware is just one part of the complex cyber threat landscape, but it is the, uh, the most commonly used form of attack. Let's talk now to Andrew uh, Sonchev, who is Dark Trace Director of Technology. Andrew, very good to speak to you. So give us the context around ransomware, because that's what seems to be used this time around. How significant is uh, and how growing is this threat from ransomware? Well, it's been a number of years now uh, since ransomware took the top place as the most dominant and effective way of attacking organizations. And we've seen it attacking healthcare. We've seen ransomware used to disrupt global supply chains. This is just the latest instance of ransomware affecting critical infrastructure. But it's really uh, the sort of go-to modus operandi of attackers, whether they are targeting small private organizations or governmental organizations or critical infrastructure, it's just devastatingly effective way for them to quickly monetize their ability to infiltrate organizations' networks. And so whenever mm. a company is connected to the internet and vulnerable, uh, ransomware provides an incredibly powerful way for attackers to enter their environments and immediately uh, demand payment. Uh, and Andrew, you say this is about monetizing their ability to get into that network. I was going to ask you what motivates them. It is about the money, obviously. That's why it's called ransomware. That's why they demand a ransom. But how much do you draw a distinction between state and non-state actors in this space? It's famously difficult to draw those distinctions. Uh, the group in question on the colonial pipeline attack, or the one that is currently being um, suggested to be the group, is one called Darkside. Um, they claim to be non-political. Uh, they actually released a statement yesterday uh, quite interestingly, trying to distance themselves in some ways from the consequences of this attack, suggesting that they don't seek to cause social consequences and they're purely motivated by profit, um, suggesting that they might do more in the future to try to screen such targets. I think they've kind of kicked the hornet's nest in this case, given the severity of the consequences affecting the U.S. critical infrastructure from this pipeline attack. Um, but as you say, uh, nation state and states engage in this, criminal gangs engage in this. Uh, if you are tasked with defending an organization, it's somewhat irrelevant these days, from your point of view, who uh, is the group behind the attack. They all play out the same way. They all operate the same way. And unfortunately, it's all too easy these days for either a very well-resourced uh, national cyber offensive capability or a comparatively less well-resourced uh, ransomware as a service uh, type of gang uh, to target your organization if they so desire. Andrew, what is it that makes infrastructure specifically and the physical infrastructure vulnerable in these cases? Because you can understand how uh, hackers get into t to somebody's systems and then d demand money uh, to get out again. But what, what links, what, what then caused, in this case, uh, the pipeline was shut down by the company itself. So what do we need to be aware of when we're thinking about the impact that they can have on infrastructure? Yeah, there's a few key uh, aspects of that. Uh, one is that usually when ransomware finds its way into these sorts of infrastructure environments, it's not normal for them to deliberately be attempting to take offline the pipeline, the factory, the power station, whatever the infrastructure is. But it tends to happen because the IT systems that they are targeting to steal data and encrypt data are very closely linked to those operational systems that maintain the power grid or maintain the flow of gas down a pipeline. Um, and the sys those systems tend to be very old, very antiquated, and somewhat left behind in the defensive modernization that we've gone through the last few years. This is why the Biden administration identified in their 100-day sprint the need for utility companies in the energy grid to deploy new technologies to invest heavily in protecting these systems. They're old, they have been neglected, and in many ways they're more challenging than normal IT systems that you or I would be familiar with because they are so unique and so atypical. Um, they are harder to protect in many ways than, say, a Windows or a Mac laptop just because they're specialist. And that means that they do need special investment and they need technology that is able to deal with their uniqueness that can protect any system rather than the standard off-the-shelf IT security solutions that we might be familiar with. 
And Andrew, when you're dealing with companies, and your business, of course, helps companies to, uh, to think about the threats they face and to, and to try to predict them using technology, when you're talking to companies about the threats they face, do they spend enough time thinking about ransomware? Is their focus on things it shouldn't be? Is everybody looking at the right things when it comes to cybersecurity? Because, I've, I mean, I've read a lot about the threat from work from home, which is another type of uh, cyber uh, threat, I suppose, that businesses have to think about at this point. Yeah, it's, it's hard to stay on top of what's the top priority right now because there's so many aspects of this challenge. I'd say organizations do take ransomware seriously, um, but it is in many ways a technological solution. It's good when governments get involved and put some weight behind it, but it requires new investment. It requires a new breed of technology, uh, self-learning, AI-based technology, uh, the sorts of things it is able to understand business environments, and whether it is work from home, whether it's cloud services, whether it's old operational technology and infrastructure, the goal is to have defensive capabilities that are not unique to one of those, but are able to protect the organization and fight back against cyber attacks wherever it hits and whatever type of form that it takes inside that business.